Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Shantae Risky's Revenge. In the last part, we entered the Hypno Baron's Labyrinth in a very short episode, mind you. And now we're gonna continue on into this place and see what we can do with it. Now the gimmick with the Hypno Baron's Labyrinth is this. You saw that eye hit there? There are four different positions to the eye, one for each cardinal direction. North, south, east, west, up, down, left, right. And every position the eye has changes the following room into something else. If I had entered it when it was in its default position as opposed to hitting it, I would be in a different room. And there's going to be multiple combinations that you're going to have to do with that system. But we want to have it where I put it so I can come down here and get the first key. And I'll admit, I like this concept, but it's a difficulty spike. Because I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you, this is the last dungeon. Three magic seals, three labyrinths, so yeah, final well, dungeon here. Anyway we, want, anyway, we want to have the eye face up so we can get into this room here, which is just a fairly basic platforming section kind of room because that's how things work. Kind of disappointed they didn't give this uh, dungeon its own theme, though. I don't think Shantae 1 gave dungeons separate themes, but, I'd, but I like it when games do that. Uh, it's one of the things I like about the Zelda games. Anyway, we got these skeleton enemies here. These guys are a weird a little thing. Uh, they're technically immortal. Uh, you can kill them normally and then they'll just turn to the grave. However, they'll eventually resurrect. And the only way you can permanently kill them is with the elephants. Uh, charge. But thankfully, you don't actually have to permanently kill them. In order to get, uh, the door to open, you just have to put them into their grave form. Because they do stay in their grave form for a good while. And now we got these wizards. I actually mentioned one of these guys earlier from a beta screenshot where you see Shantae have like 12, 7, 8, 9 hearts. But they're pretty easy. As long as you just whip them continuously, they're not hard at all. Also, fun fact, the boss is actually just beyond that locked door there, but we can't get there until later. I'm not even sure what the wizard attacks are because they never really get a chance to use them. I like the designs, though. Remind me of an odd mix of a red mage and a white mage from Final Fantasy 1. And they die like uh, Obi-Wan from Episode 4. Hmm. Speaking of which, I'm actually really looking forward to Star Wars Episode uh, 7. It, it'll already be long out by the time this gets uploaded, I know that for a fact, but I'm going day one in an IMAX, which is going to be great. It's actually technically the first Star Wars movie I'm seeing in theaters that I have the memories of, because uh, I didn't go to Episode 2 or 3 in theaters. I technically went to Episode 1 in theaters, but I was too young to remember that. I was like when I was two, not even. And I, well, technically, I went to uh, the Clone Wars, uh, the animated Clone Wars movie in theaters, but no, many people like to remember that movie. Because it was just a pretty much a, a uh, prologue to an animated TV show. Anyway, the way the eyes work in that previous room are different than the ones that the previous that we previously whipped. Uh, they will only open and close, and the combination depends on which ones you have open and closed in whatever order. Open, open, close, open, open, close, uh, or close, close. So thankfully, there's much, there's a uh, much, a very simple to and easy to understand gimmick. Though, this makes me wish that the dungeons had a much more competent map system. In fact, if they had a map system at all, because this is actually a fairly difficult dungeon compared to the first one, at least. And it makes me wish I had a map system. Uh, Pirate's Curse, thankfully, alleviates a lot of my problems with this game because that game is just great. And yeah. Anyway, this is just a kill em all room. Get a key for doing so. I do like the color scheme here, though. I like the purple. It at least looks different visually enough from the first dungeon. Though, yeah, that is one thing, I, yet again, I think Pirate's Curse just does a better job with. All the dungeons have their own unique look, instead of just being the same kind of tile set recolored. Which, mind you, I can say that for a lot of things. Risky's Revenge does some things right and some things wrong in my eyes, but I'll get into that during the credits. And if I close both eyes and head back into the right door to go into a different room entirely, obviously. Because we want to head into this room, because this is a gigantic money room! Uh, there's a couple of these in the game, and by that I think I just mean literally this one, and one you can get to later on in the game that you can enter, exit, and re-enter to get a bunch of gems very easily. Which actually might be one of the best ways to money grind. I don't show that room off, sadly, so you're gonna need to look up where that is, because I don't remember. Well, I know where the general area, but I forget exactly where.
Uh, one of the problems I actually have with Shantae 1 and Risky His Revenge in general, it's not a- it's, a, it's actually more of a nitpick than anything. Uh, dancing kind of breaks the pace a little bit. I don't mind it too much, because I've had much slower ways of breaking a pace in platformers. But I hope, uh, uh, Half Genie Hero, which has gone back to the dance system, does a better job with that. Like, maybe a button combination to turn into, uh, transformation or something. But I suppose we'll see when that game comes out. When's it coming out again? Have they even announced the release date yet? No? Okay, actually, I could go check out the Kickstarter page. Uh... Half Genie Hero Kickstarter. And these blocks are returning from Shantae 1. Pretty much the direction the eye is facing when you jump on it is the direction the eye will go. So obviously we want to head up. We... This would be kind of scary, honestly, in Shantae 1 because of instant kill spikes. But honestly, it's not a very hard thing. And now we have two eyes to combine with. That means you have approximately, what is it? 16 different combinations. We want to have them one, the one on the left up and the one on the right down first so we can head into this room, which is upside down, obviously. You get a shitload of gems for doing this. And the chest contains... I, I, to just take a guess at what, since it's an optional thing. Hmm, I wonder. What could it contain? Hmm, 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 Magic Jam 11. Either way, now that we got that little magic gem out of the way, we want to have them both face up. And this room's fairly simple, just go up. Uh, oof. Estimated delivery, November 2013. Oh wait, no, that's for the, uh, pledge $5 or more. Nah, uh, never mind. <laughs> Do they not have a solid release date on this yet? Eh, oh well. I'm looking forward to it either way. Because WayForward knows how to make games. In a way that's both unique and actually very, very fun. I don't think I've actually ever played a bad WayForward game. Aside from maybe the ones they had to license, they were licensed, they have one of the license titles. Because WayForward, while they do great games on their own, uh, for the most part, they do third parties. They're a third party developer, so they end up getting licensed games a lot, uh, like sports games and such. And even then, from what I remember, their, their sports games are pretty good. <laughs> like, you know what? Let's look up their game list. To Wikipedia! Either way, now we want to have both eyes face down, because that's how we progress in a much different way. This room's fairly simple. You have to fall all the way back down to the bottom. I believe you get a key for doing this. Yeah, it looks like a key chest. Yeah, it is. And then you just have to platform your way back up. It's very, very, very simple. Let's see what they developed. Uh, they started with a Mickey Mouse game on the Sega Genesis, so they've been around for a while. Uh, let's see, what's their next uh, big name game? Sabrina the Animated Series, Pearl Harbor, really? Uh, Godzilla Domination, Shantae. They did a ga the GBA version of the Begun SpongeBob movie? Huh. I remember that game, actually. Uh, Justice League The Flash. Hey, I actually, I really like that game, actually. That was a pretty good game. I think. They did Contra 4, which is great, although I, I should do a Contra game. They did the Wii version of Avoid His Blob? Really? Oh, I love that remake. Huh. Uh, they've obviously done all the first party stuff. You, anyway, uh, next up, you want to have both eyes face left. Uh, they did the Adventure Time game, which is apparently uh, a lot like Zelda 2. DuckTales Remastered, all the Mighty Switch stuff. Uh, they did Danger of the Ooze, really? Huh. Yeah, they've done a lot of third-party stuff instead of just their own games, but apparently from what I'm- a lot of the games I recognize are games that got, like, really well-rated, so... Yeah, they're a pretty good developer. Also, rooms like this are fairly common in, uh, the Hypno Baron's Labyrinth, rooms where you just have to get on an eye and wait for it to go a certain direction. Uh, there's actually two quick ways to get out of these rooms. Either fall into the pit like I did last part, just to get- or part, two parts ago, I think. Just to slide your way back into the entrance, or you could ride the really fast eyeball back to the entrance. Either way, next up, we want to have both eyes face right, in order to progress farther in to get another key, I think. 
you do need all four keys in order to progress, by the way. Uh, really though, there are a lot of different room combinations, but it should be, it's not a very long process to figure out which one to go through. It's a much more difficult dungeon than the Squid Baron's Labyrinth, which is actually a very noticeable difficulty spike if you're playing the game yourself. Another uh, piece of evidence that this game was technically supposed to have more to it. Uh, you can tell that they had to partially rush it, which is a thing that I wish that they expanded upon, but the game on its own is still good. I, I, it could have been more, but oh well. I still love the game as it is. A lot of people that I know, actually, who know Shantae, played this game first, then learned that there was an original game, which, mind you, the, the title, Risky is Revenge, should be a uh, pretty key factor knowing that, okay, this is a sequel. But then I showed them the original. They were like, uh, I can't tell which one's better. And honestly, I agree with them, because they both have some problems. Pirate's Curse is unanimously pretty much the favorite game in the series, though. Wow, gotta go fast. And next up, we want to have these eyes face into each other, actually. Have them gaze longingly to each other. And then we enter the room where we all need all four keys. Actually, now that I think about it, the entire eye gimmick reminds me a lot of... Oh, shit, which dungeon was it in Shantae 1? The one where you had to whip the eyes into the statues in order for them to face certain ways in order to get keys. That one. I know that, I know that wasn't the final dungeon. Was it the second to last? I forget. It's been a while. Uh, you can obviously come here one stage at a time in order to get the gems, but it's not worth doing. Just wait until you get all four keys. And upon the fourth room, you find this. This is a door combination. You, this is, I think, different for every save file. I'm not sure. And you need to come here first before going to the thing, because you do need to see it before viewing the answer. Uh, more accurately, you need to see the answer before and uh, trying to guess it, because it does not work like that. Either way, have the fa eyes face away from each other, and you find where you need to input the combination. Thankfully, it's a very easy combination to memorize for every file that I've seen, apparently. I'm not even sure if it is randomized, I've never checked. And we're in this room, which has very familiar mu learning uh, sounding music. Which is a song you should actually recognize very easily as the... Magic Fountain theme, meaning we're going to get another transformation in here. There's a treasure chest in here, but I'll tell you right now, we can't get that yet. Who approaches my Magic Fountain? I sense a restless deep energy deep inside you. Channel your passions to allow your magic to take shape. And our third transformation is not the spider. We got the Mermaid Dance. Hold it until your third belly dance move to transform. The Mermaid Dance allows us to explore the ocean depths. To change back, just press the dance button again. This is a pretty meh transformation. When you transform into it on your third belly dance move, you can't really move much on land. However, once you're in water, you have full control. The treasure chest is accessible underwater. However, we can't get it yet because it's blocked off by a statue that we need this thing's upgrade in order to get. Uh, the statue is right there. So that means in order to get that, we're, I'm going to need to backtrack through this dungeon to get it. Which is going to be annoying. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 8, we will be finishing off the Hypno Baron's Labyrinth. See you guys then.